The day I left actually had been a long time in coming. Um, I spent all my, you know, if anybody's read my book, it, it explains that I'd spent a long time once I became aware of what was happening again and, and I didn't agree with what was happening. There was a period of almost well, about 15 months when I didn't want to leave my job or my career, but I did try to be heard within the job. And because I was just a detective constable, I wasn't a chief constable, my voice was just unimportant. But I, actually, I was traumatised by, by what was going on. I couldn't sleep and I couldn't eat. And I'd, I'd be lay there at night with everything just churning round and round in my, my mind. What is going on here? Why are they not prosecuting these paedophiles? Why are they not charging them with rapes? It was a very painful realisation to, to finally come to the conclusion that I either had to accept what was happening or leave and speak out publicly. I think that is my value, really. I think that is why I'm putting myself at the front of this, because I would hope that everybody who's heard my story will know that I can be trusted. Right, so this is a little cheers to Norman, my husband, who's um, he's, he's there next to me every step of the way, and I know he is, I, I feel him there all the time, but it's really weird because when he died, I went and did a, a charity trek to Borneo, and the first day of that trek would have been his 50th birthday, and I took that as a sign to do it, and it was a, the right thing to do, and it opened up the rest of my life in a way. It was a, a big um, transition. It was it was the next step, and the foundation that we that was an idea. And then it, it, I met Becky, and we started to put it together. The foundation was incorporated on his birthday, which would have been which was the 17th of June. Actually, I think you know what? I think a little bit of this. I lost my little granddaughter Macy um, just before she was three, and when Macy died. I was in, I was working on Operation Span, and I I didn't have any I, I didn't have any time off work. I was the week of the funeral. Yeah, I was off work because GMP, uh, all the powers that be, the, the Operation Span was their most important job at that point, the biggest job they were running. And I had built bridges with these kids and with the families, and I was starting to make a, a difference. They were starting to trust me. And I felt that if I walked away to help my own family, I was failing these kids. So I went back to work and I carried on. Macy died. And then, you know, six months later, the, 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 power, the, the, the chief constable, the big bosses, said about the kids that had come on board, Oh, we've changed them. We've changed our mind. Um, you know, we're, we're not even going to take their cases to court anymore. But the only way they are able to continue with their life is to put all that pain and all the feelings about how they have been failed in, into a box in the back of the head and lock the box because that's the only way they can deal with it. Um, that's what I did when Norman died, and that's what I did when I lost Macy. I put all those feelings and all that pain into a box in my head, because I couldn't change it. Um, and I learned to manage those feelings and control my, my pain, but I've always found it very difficult to fight my own corner, because it's too painful to open that box. I feel that it's the same for these kids. I feel that I'm in a possibly a unique position to, to carry forward what people know that I've stood for, to, to try and make a difference for a greater number of survivors, really. Because I spent all those years, um, not only bringing up my own kids, but you know, training as a police officer, promising to uphold the law and to, to do all the things that you swear in your oath of attestation, that is exactly what was not being done. I want support for those who don't have a lot, who aren't strong enough to stand up for themselves. I think a society that tramples all over those is a wicked place to be. And I know that I won't be able to change the world, but I know which side of the fence I want to be on. And I will do my very best to to try to make happen what I think is the right thing. So a long way to go, but you've got to start somewhere. And if you don't take this, 
the first step, you don't know where that path will lead. So, you know, the first step for me in leaving the police was leaving the police. And that was a very bleak time and a scary time. But the journey's led to here. And at the beginning of that journey, I was just being told by everybody, come, come to work, put your bum on a seat and basically shut up. And I couldn't, but had I done that, we wouldn't be where we are today. So every journey starts with one step and this is the next step. So I'm hoping that we will make it work. Tell the truth, the whole truth